Right now, Ryan Garcia is in a hot seat based on some recent comments that he had written on social media and then decided to delete it after. The exact words was F the blacks and F the Muslims and then deleted it. And as you could imagine, that would have gotten a serious backlash because obviously it did. He tried to erase it. Obviously, you can't just erase anything that you write on social media nowadays. People screenshot it. People download it. And not only that, people go out and uh, spread it around the world. That is the unfortunate thing about it. I'm going to react to a video from a very respected member of the YouTube community, in particular, the prison YouTube community. A little background on this gentleman. His name is Dubs. He was an OG gang member, right? He spent time in prison. Let me just say this. I know that a lot of people who know about his case and understand what he did may look at it and say, you know what? This guy right here, he's, he's, I don't even want to say it, right? Just the worst things but look at it like this, from the point of view of your social contract and who you run with. Understand this, okay? When you're a Marine, when you're a Navy SEAL, when you're an Army Ranger, you have a social contract to the military, to the Constitution, and everything else. And this is no different with gangs. You are under a social contract to this particular hood, this particular body, and... Then you have ranks, structures, and orders just like the military. Now, obviously, it's not like the military, but you can't argue and say that there isn't any similarities in the structure. The only difference is one may look at it as more prestigious than the other. But either way, the reason why I wanted to react to his video regarding Ryan Garcia is because, number one, not only does he know Ryan Garcia... Well, not know him personally, but knows his family, which is an important uh, detail to point out in this particular video. But he also grew up in an era where there was racial tension amongst blacks and Mexicans in Southern California. And I think that this sort of explains in full detail where Brian Garcia's mind would be at in the current moment of time or how he was influenced by these particular rhetorics. Now, it is important to understand that not all California black folks have anything against Mexicans. In fact, there are some hoods and some gangs that are affiliated with Mexican gangs as a black gang and vice versa. But there are black gangs that do fight Mexican gangs and that's just the reality of it. And as a result, people sort of develop this sense of me versus them attitude, okay, which is a common thing in tribalism. And keep in mind, that's literally what gangs are in the first place. There's just nothing more than tribes. You may look at it as ridiculous. You may look at it as useless, but it is a reality in a way of life. And unfortunately, if you grow up in Southern California, whether you're a gang member or not, Racism is a reality, and it's crazy that for a place that has literally very few whites, it's pretty racist in terms of the tension, but some say that it's getting better, and some say that it's not. Let's react to this particular video right here. I'm going to put on the description below this particular video for you to see it in its full entirety in video, but for now, we're going to do this in audio. So here's... Dub double S right here. What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. New, New video. video. So. Now, usually he has a louder gun that he fires off in the uh, sound, uh, little audio that he has going on. But usually, I mean. I don't know, maybe it's uh, a smaller gunshot because it's probably a very sad story that's going on right now, but let's continue on. I don't know. I don't know if this happened yesterday. I don't know when it happened, but I, I opened up my U 
YouTube app, and it's it's everywhere. Ryan Garcia allegedly uh, going off on a racist rant. Um, I don't know that it's Ryan, but I'm going to speak as if it is. Now, so far, a lot of people have confirmed that it is Ryan. Obviously, there's a lot of fake accounts out there, right? Just people impersonating different celebrities or different people that are online. That does happen. This is not one of them. I do want to say, first of all, that uh, a couple of the a couple of the podcasts that I saw that were talking about this issue. They, they were, one of them specifically said, oh, we've known Ryan was racist for a long time. And they, it's not so much that Ryan is racist. It's more like Ryan grew up in a neighborhood or grew up in a region where this is common. This is common. Now, once again, I said that not all Mexicans, whether they're gang affiliated or not, hates black people. It's not a reality. Uh, for some people, it varies. And then there's some that are affiliated with them. And then you also got to take into consideration there's the other aspects of Mexicans joining black gangs. But that's another story for another time. They, they tied in Donald Trump and all this stuff and how Donald Trump... And that's a good point because guess what? Donald Trump for sure is going to be used as a prop in this particular argument with Ryan Garcia saying exactly what he said, and that's the unfortunate thing about it. Hates Mexicans, but here's this Mexican that hates blacks, and, and the word racism is thrown around so much. Now, I'm not gonna get into the wheat. Quick at hand. Racism is thrown around so much. Now, Racism, it definitely does get thrown around a lot uh, these days, but yeah. I'm not going to get into the weeds. I want to focus on the topic at hand. If this was Ryan, it was a hard ER. You know, I know these youngsters nowadays, for whatever reason, no matter what ethnicity, so keep, they're using that N-word. So keep in mind, when Ryan tweeted F Muslims and F Blacks um, and F you'd uh with the n-word he said it with the n-word by the way he said it with a hard er so that's a little different okay that's a little different than saying it as a term of endearment like hey what's up my ninja or this and that even me i'll tell you this right dubs is going to go into why he doesn't like the word me personally obviously i'm north african do i have a pass to say it yeah do I hang around black dudes that allow, let's say, other Asians and Samoans to say it. Yeah. But will I say it? No. But I will tell you what circumstances that I will say it maybe to quote somebody. Okay. Which, unfortunately, for Joe Rogan, he's gotten canceled before because that's literally what he did was quote somebody and said the N-word with an E-R. And even I won't do that. But if I'm quoting somebody saying it as a term of endearment... Okay, maybe I'll say, okay, such and such said the following, and I quote, okay, I'm going to put quotation marks even with my fingers or where I'm writing it. But if I'm writing it, I'll sometimes use a ninja emoji to convey my message to make you understand like, well, this is what I'm trying to say or, but I'm not going to say it. Either way, there are people that don't like the word and there are even Mexicans out here in California that check other Mexicans for saying the N-word. And I think Dubs is going to elaborate on this. And, and for some reason, the black community has allowed for people to use it with the, with the A on the end, as if that makes it better. That's cool. I'm old school. I don't believe that word should be used. I've been around. I've done time in prison with blacks that did not like blacks using the N-word. I think that's a better stance. I wish more black people were of that stance and mindset and would check their own people so that everyone would stop using that word. Well, I agree with him for the most part. However, it is a cultural uh, understanding depending on who you are. I'll give you an example. 
you guys know the rapper Stupid Young, right? The Cambodian Asian boy Crip rapper down in Long Beach. He did the song Mando with Mozzie. And for all those that are uh, hip-hop fans that are watching this, you're probably thinking, why, why are you repeating this? Well, because this is an MMA page and they may not know what you know or may not be tapped into what you're tapped in. So I have to give full detailed information in order to convey the context of the story. So, Stupid Young uses the N-word because he's an Asian boy and he's a Crip, right? He's an Asian boy Crip. Now, with the Asian boy Crips, the first word that you have to understand in that concept is Crip. It is a lineage from an African-American gang, okay? So, if you're part of the Crip set, whether you're an Asian Crip or whether you're a Crip from... Uh, another race and you just happen to jump in the gang more than likely the lineage that you're going to go back to is of african-american heritage there's no way around that so they allow stupid young to say the n-word ebro from new york who by the way sort of grows up in a different sort of politics of the racial dynamic of new york he condemned stupid young but the problem is Stupid Young comes from a different culture in California, in Long Beach, to which that is tolerated and that is allowed. Now you go to, let's say, socially conscious black cities like Atlanta, uh, Chicago, maybe in, even in the Midwest or all over the southern states. They're not going to allow you to say that if you're a non-black. For the most part, and generally speaking... This person, I, I don't see, I didn't see the face. I don't know who was saying that, but they're, they're attributing it, they're attributing it to, to Ryan. And so if it was Ryan, Ryan just got suspended. I'm sure he's, he's angry, but you'd be, you'd be angry at the individual. You know, there's people that are saying that the person that, that ran, that runs the lab has ties to Haney. You know, it is what it is, but you don't, you don't, you never target an entire ethnicity. You don't use racial slurs, period. Um, the fact that you just got suspended, that's one thing, but to compound it by going after an entire ethnicity and using that word, that's, you, that's, it's, it's game over, party over. And Dubs is absolutely right about that, right? Because you cannot say these things just based on the beef that you have going on. Let me put some context into what uh, Dubs is saying here. So Victor Conte is the president of VADA, which is the drug testing agency that literally put Ryan in hot waters because of the testing. And then some will argue that it's false testing or this and that. Even Dana White mentioned at a press conference after a fight which, by the way, was non-related to Ryan Garcia or boxing or any kind of way. And he said, I feel like there's something tainted going on in that particular subject with the testing. And that's Dana White speaking from the outside. Now, what Dubs is saying here is you can't use an entire ethnicity as a way to target an individual. And I've had experiences where I've seen this in New Jersey. I'm telling you guys, I grew up with a lot of Italians in New Jersey. I grew up with a lot of black folks, obviously. And uh, I grew up with different types of ethnicities, period. But one thing I noticed with Italian Americans, let's say if they got into it with black kids or they got into it with whatever uh, infractions that was done upon them, let's say they got their house robbed and they knew that it was uh, black folks that did it. They would immediately go out and use racial slurs straight away. And you know how Italians are. They're very emotional people. They get very loud and very aggressive when something doesn't go their way. Uh, and guess what? They're also known to have used racial slurs. But guess what? Here's another thing. That's done behind closed doors. The issue here is that you're doing it in a world platform with your social media and even though you can delete it, which he did, people took screenshots of it already and 
it's unfortunate for Ryan Garcia at this point. I don't, I've had uh, interactions with someone in, in Ryan's family. Really, really cool dude, man. And, and this is the reason why I wanted to react to Dub's video because of this information right here. I don't, I've had uh, interactions with someone in, in Ryan's family, really, really cool dude, man, and, and um, I know he has to be just, I mean, I, I, can, I don't even know what to say about this, because like I said, I'm not trying to be an apologist for him, anybody using racial slurs, I'm not with it. Um, well, I'll and look, this is important to understand about Dubs, right? Obviously, he spent time in uh, prison uh, almost all of his life. He's now like 50 years old. He spent most of it in prison because of, well, how do I say this? Putting in work for his body, okay? That's the best way to put it. You can agree with that. You can disagree with that. It is what it is. But also, what is also a fact in California state prisons is that it's racially divided. So in other words, for someone like this brother right here that we're listening to right now, he had to roll with the Mexicans. He couldn't politic or function with black folks in prison due to the politics. Now, some may look at that as racist. Some can look at that as just a way of life, a way of survival, a way of just following the rules that is of a certain place. But it is interesting to understand that this is the stance that he's taking with the infractions and the transgressions that Ryan Garcia is committing. In prison, I was, I was told, we, we don't do that. You know, if you want to disrespect somebody, you disrespect them with their hands. You don't do it with words. And um, whoever you're mad at... Now look, some will argue and say that Mexicans in prison do use racial slurs against uh, blacks. Some will argue that. But in Dub's account, he's saying that he doesn't do that, nor do the people that he's functioned with on the inside and maybe even the people in the streets that he's ran with. It has nothing to do with anyone else of that ethnicity. It has to do with that person. And you focus your energy at that person. And you would hope that you that a person that has an issue with somebody would be able to speak and communicate, um, if not eloquently, at least respectfully, and not resort to this stuff. This is this is childish stuff. This, you know, when I heard it, it just it reminded me. Of, I play Call of Duty, and I, it reminded me of how dudes go in there and they just throw the N word around to try to inflame people. And that's true. This is a common culture in Call of Duty and also in the world of uh, GTA Online and maybe even UFC Online. This is just what they do. You are in the internet culture where people are safe at home, not in front of the hood, not in front of people that could really put it on them if they, let's say, said a racially derogatory statement. Right? That's just the culture of the internet, unfortunately. And... To tie this into Ryan Garcia, Ryan Garcia attracts a lot of people that are within that age demographics. It's important to know that. And attracting that certain demographics, this is just a type of behavior that they're going to engage in. And sometimes even you, as a big time celebrity, are going to forget that I shouldn't be saying things like this because I'm not a normal person. I'm a person that has a worldwide platform that people can pick apart by the millions. Or, or they think it's funny. or I don't know. I, I, it just sounds stupid. And, and, and when I heard this this recording, I, I felt the same way. This just sounds stupid. What's the point? Um, hopefully, hopefully, more comes out about this. But if it was him... It's not justified. If it wasn't him, then hopefully those that are calling him a racist will apologize. Now, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt that there is a possibility that Ryan Garcia did not say this. The problem is that Ryan Garcia came out with an apology. 
he had an African-American woman with him posing. I don't know who she is. I don't know if she's a star or a rapper or just any random lady of the night, as they say. And then he goes and he says, I apologize. I love everybody. So it kind of hints at the point that, yes, Ryan Garcia did say this. And there's a certain remorse that he's expressing based on these transgressions that he's committed or has known to himself to have committed uh, if it is uh if it is ryan um you can't apologize apologize your way out of that not not the way it was used in the phone call um maybe i'll try to um reach out to ryan's family member and and and, and get an explanation if there is one that you know that this person may not even so this part is very interesting and i'm going to tell you why because dubs obviously as he's mentioned is family friends with ryan garcia he's going to reach out to his family talk to them try to get an understanding of what is going on here but the way that i interpret that well who cares what i think and how i interpret that how a lot of people are going to interpret it really is that they're going to look at this and say something to the effect that, hey, you know what? Uh, maybe he's just trying to create excuses for him. And here's the thing, right? That's normal. That's absolutely normal. Most people that you love, that you care about, that you will ride with till the sun comes down, you will make excuses for them. It's called selective politic. And now I'm not saying Dubs is doing that. I'm trying to tell you that this is just a natural human reaction to do. You want to give them the benefit of the doubt. You want to give them room to explain themselves if there's any explanation at all as he has said it himself right here. But at the same time, I think Dubs is also in a realization that there is no defending this. And at some point, you have friends that say things that you just can't defend. Uh, want to discuss it. We've, we've been seeing this meltdown for a while. You know, the lead up to the fight. Prior to this Haney fight, Ryan was praising God and, and, and always talking about God. Like he had started talking about God and, and and his religious beliefs and then and then just in the lead up to, to the fight it just things went completely sideways. Now here's the commentary that I want to make about Ryan Garcia and his so called affiliation with the Christian religion, right? I think that a lot of that is just virtue signaling. Now look I know a lot of people who are Ryan Garcia fans are not gonna like that. Maybe other people who support Ryan Garcia are not going to like me saying that, but this is the facts. And I'm going to tell you why I'm saying this and what I'm basing it out of. As you guys know, Khabib is known to be the most religious man in mixed martial arts, right? Including his whole entire team. I've had experience being around guys like that. They really do believe in what they are saying. Do I think Ryan Garcia is that guy? No, because the evidence says otherwise. Now, obviously, the Christian religion has a different rule on drinking, or does it? Does it have a, a different rule? Obviously, in Islam, you're not allowed to drink. You're not allowed to do or say certain things. So, by default, we're going to look like the more conservative and more... Uh, and a much more stronger practitioner of the religion than Christians themselves who have very uh, uh, loose set of rules, right? Uh, at least in comparison to the Islamic religion, I think that's fair to say. So my estimation is that I think Ryan Garcia was doing a lot of that for virtue signaling. Now look, you could agree or disagree with that. That is just my personal opinion and my take on the matter. I think there's a certain level of virtue signaling that Ryan Garcia is 
exhibiting in order to gain a certain uh in order to gain a certain fan base in particular the conspiracy theorists the maga people the people that are into the qanon conspiracies and people that are hyper skeptical of the world which by the way i am to a certain extent but i also like to approach it in a very objective matter in a matter of fact uh, type of uh, scenario rather than going off of my emotions or emotional fallacies you know, we had this hotel room incident. I don't know what to believe. I, you know, it, it was... By the way, the hotel incident, I was down in the Beverly Hills and Los Angeles area when that happened. I urge you guys to check out some of my videos that I have of, uh, of that situation. I have a few Ryan Garcia videos that sort of uh, talks about that. Go check it out. Alleged that ISIS build up to the fight. It's nothing. There's just, because they say Haney can't sell a fight, right? So... And that's the truth. I don't think Devin Haney is really the worst promoter, but at the same time, let's be honest, he's not a promoter like Ryan Garcia, at least not in the recent times in which we've seen Ryan Garcia just really turn up the way that he did in these recent times. Ryan was trying to stir up controversy to sell a fight, but it's not, it hasn't stopped. And this right here, you cannot, you cannot use racial slurs, man. And, 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 and hopefully nobody's going to just try to justify and say, oh, it was a private conversation. You don't use those, you don't use those words even in private unless that's who you really... Now, this is where it gets really interesting, right? Look, private conversations, people do say a lot of things behind closed doors. And I've told you guys this, right? I've been around a lot of Italians in the East Coast that act one way in front of everybody because they own businesses, they own... Uh, certain positions in certain companies and things of that nature and guess what there's a lot of things